There are a lot of misconceptions surrounding both cubic zirconia and moissanite, so let's compare these two very popular diamond imitators. First of all, you may not have realized how similar these two stones actually are, and contrary to popular belief, they are both synthetic, which is the same thing as saying that they're lab-made or factory-made, just like a lab-made diamond. Both moissanite and cubic zirconia have been found in their natural form on Earth, but this is very, very rare, and they do not appear in plentiful amounts on Earth. So for all intents and purposes, all of the gems that you see in any sort of jewelry are all going to be synthetic. So as you've probably realized, moissanite has become massively popular in the last couple of years, and cubic zirconia has been going strong since the 70s, which it, when it really hit the mass market as far as a diamond imitator. The reason why these two stones have become so popular and the reason why they make excellent stand-in for diamonds is because they actually both have a higher RI or refractive index than natural or lab-made diamond. Again, it's important to keep in mind that both natural and lab-made diamond have the same chemical structure and composition, so essentially they're the same. Now, what exactly do I mean when I say both of these stones have more fire and a higher RI than diamonds? It essentially means that when you look at the gem, they have that spectral rainbow colored sparkle that you love to see, especially when you're in jewelry stores and they have those amazing lights. You look at the stone and you're moving it around and they just have that really eye-catching sparkle with all of those beautiful colors inside. Both CZ and Moissanites are extremely sparkly, more sparkly than diamonds. And officially, for example, diamond has what's considered moderate fire, whereas Moissanite has extreme fire and cubic zirconia has strong fire. Both CZ and Moissanite do have excellent hardness, which means they're not gonna scratch very easily and you can wear them every day without really worrying about wearing down those facet edges or getting you know, the appearance of it being worn. Moissanite in particular has been marketed very heavily for the fact that it has a similar hardness to diamond. The truth is it has a hardness of around 9.25 on the Mohs hardness scale, where of course diamond is a 10 and known as the hardest material on earth. But what you need to remember is that diamond is still exponentially harder than moissanite because the scale isn't exactly quantitative. So because it does have that excellent hardness, moissanite can be cut and polished very beautifully and it does have those really sharp edges and is great for everyday wear. But in reality, because it is a 9.25, it's actually much closer in hardness to a sapphire or a ruby, which is a nine. And cubic zirconia isn't far behind with a hardness of around 8.25 or eight and a half. So again, even though moissanites are synthetic and they do have a totally different chemical structure than diamonds, you may have seen on social media that they can sometimes test positive for diamonds depending on the diamond tester that a jeweler is using. A lot of diamond testers do use thermal conductivity to test for diamonds, and moissanite and diamond do have very similar thermal conductivity, so those testers can test positive with moissanite for diamond. In a contrast, of course, cubic zirconia is never gonna test positive for diamond with a tester. So having said that, you may be thinking, well, how do jewelers or gemologists really tell these stones apart? And at face value, I can tell you, it actually can be really difficult. If I had a natural diamond and a moissanite and a CZ in front of me, at first glance, I really probably wouldn't be able to tell. Like I said, they all have great hardness, so they're gonna have great polish and symmetry and sharpness. They're all gonna look very sparkly. So at first glance, and if I was just seeing someone on the street with their jewelry, I wouldn't be able to tell which one was which. However, all it takes is a little bit of a closer look and I'm gonna be able to tell pretty quickly. One of the biggest tells with moissanite, for example, is that it's actually doubly refractive and CZ and diamond are singly refractive. Which, what this means is that the moissanite, when light enters into that stone, it reflects the light back to you twice. So it's almost like looking at a mirror image when you look into that stone. So as soon as I put the moissanite under my microscope, or even if I'm just using my little 10X loop here, I'm gonna see that all of the facet edges are actually doubled when I look at the moissanite. And I don't need to look very hard. I'm gonna automatically see that all the lines look very blurry. And some jewelers do see do say that moissanites in general have a blurry appearance to them, even just with their eye, and that's why. 
Now, if a jeweler or a gemologist is taking an even closer look, some of the other tells that they can use is they can place a loose moss knife, for example, or a ring depending on how it's set or another piece of jewelry over a neutral background. They're gonna flash their mag light over the top of the pavilion of the stone, and they're really gonna see those rainbow spectral colors like I was talking about because of the high refractive index. Another test that gemologists sometimes use with CZ is putting it in the microscope, again, with the pavilion, which is those bottom facets facing up. And if you rock it back and forth in very specific lighting, you get what we call an orange pavilion flash. That's where the whole stone kind of reflects a strong orange color back to you. And that is a very specific tell for cubic zirconia. All this has you thinking about, you know, wearing your cubic zirconia earrings or moissanite ring or something. And you're really wondering when you're out and about if people can tell if it's a diamond or not. One of the other tells I will say is that when we look at the jewelry, we might not be able to tell by the stone, especially when it's in a specific setting, but it's the setting itself that often gives away the quality and the price point of the stone. So if someone were to ask me, I would be looking at the quality of the rest of the diamonds maybe, or stones in that particular piece of jewelry. I'd be looking at if it's symmetrical, how fine or well finished does the polish look, um, are the prongs, you know, have very fine tips? Do they look well finished? Does it look custom made? You know, with costume jewelry, things tend to be a bit loose. They don't fit uh, the setting and the prongs or the bezel doesn't fit the stone very well. There's just not that extra level of finish and quality look to the piece of jewelry. So that's actually the thing that we're looking for as a jeweler or a gemologist. When we take the first glance at the piece of jewelry, we're looking at those high quality finishes that are gonna tell us that this is a more quality and expensive piece, which is more likely to have a diamond versus a diamond imitation. So while prices continue to fall for natural diamonds and for lab diamonds, you may be wondering, what's the point of spending on those stones when you're telling me I can have a cubic zirconia or moissanite piece of jewelry that people really can't tell the difference? And you know what? It's fair enough point. Of course, over the last hundred years, the marketing of diamonds has been so strong and it's really been placed in our mind as this luxury item, this item that represents love and marriage and, you know, so many other things. But if you just want that high wattage look, that glamorous look, especially for something like stud earrings or maybe a tennis bracelet or tennis necklace, CZ or Moissanite could be an excellent choice. The truth is 99% of people are not going to be able to tell that it's not diamonds, especially as I've mentioned, if you spend more money on the setting, you could even have a jeweler make something custom for you, even with a metal that's not as expensive, such as sterling silver. If you want that piece that really looks like it's been well finished and it's going to fool most people if you have those high quality finishes. It's also amazing for travel. It could be amazing for making replica jewelry of some of the diamond pieces you already have if you wanna wear them out and about, or maybe you're just a little bit tough on your hands or depending on what kind of work you do. Now, when it comes to the price points, you definitely have to remember that both of these are synthetic stones. And yes, moissanites have been insanely popular the last couple of years. And I've seen some moissanites going for crazy prices, sometimes even comparable to natural diamonds. This is not a price point that you should be entertaining. I want you to think about what you would potentially be paying for cubic zirconia earrings, for example, in your local department store. Something that's high quality, something that lasts, and you don't wanna be paying much more than that for either of these stones. Yes, Moissanite's price point can be a little bit higher. It does have that great hardness. It does have those beautiful, you know, sparkle a little bit more than cubic zirconia. So if you want to pay a little bit more, that's okay, but you definitely shouldn't be paying anything too elevated from the CZ prices. Both of these stones are widely available. They're mass marketed, mass made, and they are very cheap to produce. So while they are beautiful stones, they can be used for a lot of different purposes. I want you to be very reasonable with what you're willing to pay. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to learn more about lab diamonds versus natural diamonds, check out some of our other videos. And if you have any questions about comparing cubic zirconia, moissanite, and even natural or lab diamonds, feel free to drop your questions in the comments below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. To learn more about gems and jewelry, you can also visit us on our main page at winstongemsandjewelry.com.